Hello, hello, going live today with the voiceover actress Kyla Carter. I can't wait for Kyla to join me at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Hello, everybody. Hi, Jake. Hi, Grace. Kyla, come join my live. Request it. And then we will start. Yes. Ah, request to be in your live video view. Give me one second. Here we go. All right, we're bringing Kyla Carter on, everybody. Hi, Eden Franco. How are you? I miss you. Ah, hi. Hi, Kyla. How are you? It's been a I, while. I know. I'm, I'm great. How are you? I'm, I'm hanging in there. It's a crazy <laughs> time, but we're doing okay. We are. We are. We're, we're doing our best. Yes, yes. So, Kyla, first I'm going to introduce you and tell everybody who you are awesome. and why they should be here to watch this amazing live with you. So... I'm Jessica, by the way, the Artistic Director of A Class Act New York, and Kyla is 14 years old. She's a professional actress, and she actually got her start at A Class Act New York when she was five. Um, you did our agent and manager showcase. You did um, classes like Magical Musical Theater for Young Ones. You did a bunch of cabarets, charity cabarets, and then you wound up, Kyla, at that agent and manager showcase getting your representation. You were represented by Generation TV and also Abrams Artists, which is now A3 Artists, which is one of the top by coastal firms in the country. And um, so we were super proud when you got that representation at our showcase. And um, I've, I've just been following your journey for a long time and like really excited uh, to see what you've been up to. So, um, so Kyla, yeah, some questions for you now that I got that spiel out of the way. Um, you're now with Paradigm. I should mention you've switched agencies, gone to an even b bigger fish in the biz, um, yes. Paradigm and Stuart Talent. So basically you moved, I'm assuming, with Bonnie Bloom from Abrams to... Okay, cool. So Kyla, you do... Well, Kyla has done, just so you guys know, two national tours, Broadway national tours, Sound of Music and White Christmas, which is super cool. And then you also have done a ton of voiceovers. And I really want to talk about that today. But first, let's start with your Broadway national tour credits oh. and experience. Um, so tell me, Kyla, so tell me, how did you, like, first of all, how did you just book, what was your first Broadway tour? Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about that. So my first Broadway tour was actually Sound of Music with Jack O'Brien. And... I was eight, just turning nine. It was right around my birthday when rehearsal started. Actually, the first rehearsal was on my birthday. So I was a little bit younger than I am now. And I was on that tour for 18 months with so many incredible people. Yes, a very, very long time. That's a long time. Was, we have to talk about that in a minute. But yeah, keep going. Yes. Then, so I first started off as the Gretel Marta understudy. So I went on to the tour being an understudy and I got really lucky and I got to perform almost every night in LA because one of the other girls was way too young to perform yet um, because of the child labor laws they have there. So I actually got to go on, which was amazing. Cool. And so I got to have um, shows under my belt. So I was more comfortable with the role. It was an amazing experience. And then as I got older, I grew into each role of the Von Trapp children. So I went from being the understudy to Gretel to Marta and then understudying Brigitte. So wow. yes, as I got older, I went from each role, which was super awesome. I met so many amazing people. And that was really what kickstarted my love for um, musical theater. I've always loved musical theater, but that was like the, oh my gosh, I want to do this forever. Okay, so th th let's go back a little bit then, because you were yeah. only five years old when you came to us, and you got your agent at our big agent showcase with 20 scouting agents and managers. Yeah. So you must have had some sort of, I mean, you were obviously naturally gifted and adorable, um, but like, what was it that drew you? What made you say, mom, take me to classes? Like, I want to learn. I want to be an actor. Did that, was there a moment for you where you were like, aha, this is it? Yes, actually. I, so my parents put me in everything when I was little, when I was like four. As parents do, they put you in soccer practice, um, gymnastics, trying to figure out what you like to do. And they put me in a musical theater class at a little local theater near us. And I came home singing one day and my parents were kind of surprised because I was just humming. It was actually Seasons of Love from, it was Seasons of Love. So it was actually kind of funny because that's such an adult show for a four-year-old to be singing. Right. <laughs> 
it was so interesting. Anyway, then after taking those musical theater classes, I was sitting at home and Shirley Temple DVDs popped up on the TV. And I called my parents there and I was like, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy, I need those, I need those right now. So they called the number and oh my gosh, I watched them over and over and over and over again. Every single one, they were all in black and white. So they were like her older films from when she was really little. And that's when I really decided I want to do that. I want to be her. I want to be exactly like her. I want to do the tap dancing, the singing, the acting. And that's kind of what pushed me into it. And after I got singing lessons and started where I am now. <laughs> Wow, cool. So, and then you just were one of those people who was just really amazing and wound up getting representation and you started working right away. Oh, you definitely look and remind me of Shirley Temple, especially when you were little. I wish I had a picture. Um, that's really cute. Um, that's a great story. So you booked this national Broadway tour, Sound of Music, and it sounds to me like Jack O'Brien, if you can tell us who he is for our audience, because oh, he's yeah. an impressive person. Mm -hmm. Did he keep requesting you every year? Like, I want Kyla to take over this role as she gets older, and this role, and this role. It's kind of interesting how that works out, actually, because Jack O'Brien, if nobody knows, he's a three-time Tony Award-winning director. He's done amazing things. Well, now he probably has more Tonys, but at the time, he was three-time Tony Award-winning director. And um, he's an amazing human being. He is incredible to work with. So as I got older, they did a, they had to do mandatory auditions, of course. They have to do SAG open calls, et cetera, et cetera. But um, since I already knew the role, it was easy for me to step up into another role. So it was more like accessibility that was good. And also, I, I was pretty good at the role. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it was easy for me to be in the role. I knew all the cast. I knew basically everything about it. I didn't need to be brought back into rehearsal. Right. So it was accessibility, and I guess it was a little bit of talent, but I really, I just knew everybody, so it was- That's so cool. So 18 months on the road, Kyla. Can you, I mean, I don't know if people can really understand. We're seven months into this pandemic. Imagine you've been on the road this entire time, right? Mm -hmm. But you still have nine months to go. Try to oh. give it some, like, I'm trying to, you know, put some reference here for how long 18 months is. Like, I don't know a lot of other young actors who went away for 18 months. Oh, yeah. So, so basically, tell me about that experience. Like, what were the challenges? What were the rewards of traveling for 18 months? Yeah, I mean... I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't. It was the most amazing experience that I know I'll never have again. So just being able to see the country, I've been to 75 cities, 25 states. I've been across everywhere, a little bit of Canada, just going to all these places, meeting so many new people, enjoying it with my tour family was just so rewarding. And right. it was special to me. It was kind of hard though, because imagine leaving your family. I have a younger brother. He's only 13 months younger than me. And I, I left him for so long and I'd come back once in a while and he'd visit, but it's not really the same as having that face connection that we're experiencing right now with masks and everything. So it was, it was hard in that sense. It was hard not seeing my dad and my brother because my mom traveled with me and I had an amazing time with her. And it was, it was really intense though, like going from city to city every week and doing this and doing that and all this crazy stuff happening. But it was really, it was really worth it. Now, I always want to know how young actors, after you get off the stage, right, you're probably like really pumped up with a lot of energy. You're on a high, really, is what yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. How did you fall asleep at night? Because you oh. have to do schoolwork the next day, I would imagine. You're not just a professional actor, but you're also in school. Cool. So how do you... You know, what time would the show end, let's say? 10, 30, 11? 10, 30, 11 is when the show would end. And <laughs> half the time, the actors would want to go out to some restaurant because we'd be starving at the end of the night. I mean, you're burning off all this energy because you're so psyched, you're so in the moment that when you come off, you're still on that high. You're still right. kind of in that whole world. Mm -hmm. So by the time I went to bed, I would say it was like 12, 1 30, which now it isn't that bad for me, but younger Kyla that was that was late that That's was exhausting Did yeah sleep late like how does that work for a young a young I, kid mm -hmm. usually school would start around either 12 or 1 so I would sleep till probably around 10 so I was getting enough sleep it was I always made sure sleep was a priority for me because I need sleep to function if I don't have sleep it's just gonna go 
crashing down. And I think that's with anybody, if you're going, 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 you eventually you're just going to burn out and you're just going to fall apart. So sleep, my mom always made sure I was falling asleep. Sometimes she'd give me like melatonin, which would help me fall asleep or I've had tea or something that was like relaxing. I also brought um, a dehumidifier that would blow out like nice, like airy water that would help okay. me fall asleep essential oils and all that stuff. And overall, those probably helped me fall asleep the best. But being satisfied with myself at the end of the night, I think that helped me fall asleep too. Right. So and now, okay, w was there ever an incident on stage that was like, oh my gosh, like, yes. yeah, there's always things that happen, right? It's live yes. theater. There's it's bloopers. Fun. So what tell me uh, if you can remember like one or two funny experiences or oh. things that happen. Definitely remember two. One of them, we had these moving panels that went on and off stage so they could carry, um, easily carry sets onto stage without having a million crew hands there to bring it on and having a blackout where the whole show basically stops for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And it was going from a terrace scene, so outside, beautiful, to inside. And one of the terrace, the terrace got stuck on stage while all the other props were getting rushed on. So mm -hmm. there were um, outside chairs and outside furniture inside of the house that was <laughs> looked so elegant. And I remember I was supposed to run across and stand in the spot where the terrace is. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm standing on the terrace. And the terrace started to move off stage very quickly. And I almost fell on top of my friend and I stumbled. And we would laugh about it the whole entire time. And they were like, are you okay? And we're like, oh, we're fine. Um, another instance would be there's actually a wedding that happens in the show between Maria and um, Captain Von Trapp. And it was the night, bef the night before the music director rewrote the lyrics to the song. He rewrote every single lyric. And when they came on stage, they had forgotten every single lyric that they memorized. So they kind of just stood there and they ended up just laughing through it and dancing and having a grand old time. But we were cracking up backstage because we didn't know what they were supposed to do. Oh, did the crazy. audience feel that, did they know that they're, that they're Oh, I'm sure they, they very awkward tension between everybody because they were kind of just standing there, not remembering the words, just laughing it off and trying to make good of the situation. Oh, it was very very fun. <laughs> That's hysterical. Okay, so now I want to talk about your career as a voice actor. Yes. Um, you do a ton of voiceover, which is super cool because that's what the one area, like during this pandemic, that's yeah. actually been going strong. It uh, is. Because I don't know if these guys know, but you can record auditions and actual bookings from home if you have like a little home studio. So I'm assuming you have a home studio, right? Ooh, we actually built, uh, my mother sacrificed her office so I could build my own home studio. And it's very, it's amazing. My dad painted it. I wanted it to be bright red. Nobody knows why. I was just like, I want it to be bright red. So it was a bright red room and it has all the furniture, all of the amazing mic equipment and everything else that you could possibly need in a home studio. Super cool. So you've got your home studio, you've got your setup. And by the way, guys, it doesn't cost a fortune to get a home studio. <laughs> um, so let me ask you something. So you started to, what was your first voiceover job that you booked? My first voiceover job was actually one of the bigger jobs that I booked. And I was about five years old. And it was for a show called Wally Kazam, where I got to play Hattie the Witch. And within my first year of getting an agent, I had booked that show. So it was very exciting for me at the time because I was so young and I'd already booked this amazing job wow super cool so you learned at a very early age which is wonderful let me ask you something so when you created hattie did mm -hmm. you use your own natural voice did they want you to have your own voice or did you have to create a character that was not natural? that's a great question i think when i was little i had a very nasally voice it was kind of like i had a stuffy nose mm -hmm. i was very i kind of sounded like this it was very like um, almost like pee in the way I talk. So I didn't actually put on a voice for that show. I just used my own voice. Now I have different voices I use for different characters. But at Hattie, I was so young, I didn't know, oh, you need a different voice for different characters. Or, oh, it could be based off of appearance. And it was really interesting because I look back at that now and I'm like, I sounded like that? That's so weird. That's so okay. interesting. And I, but I'm very lucky that I got to learn um, voiceover acting at such a young age because it really set me up for the future. 
what were some of the things that they taught you? So in other words, like tell us some of the things that one should do and one should not do when they're doing voiceovers. I feel like I learned how to listen and how to react very, very fast. Because when you're in a um, voiceover room, when you're doing the voiceover for the character, they are throwing a million things at you at once. Actually, for one of the jobs I did, they said, okay, so now that you've said that line like three different ways, say it like Batman, go. <laughs> I was just standing there and I was like, all right, well, we're saying it like Batman now, I guess. So it was very fast paced and you have mm -hmm. to adapt easily. I think that's the main thing that I learned at such a young age, which now it doesn't really phase me that much where when I was younger, I would be like, oh, okay. And I'd have to do it a bunch of times in order to get it. Where now I'm like, oh, you want that? Go ahead. Great. I got it right here. Right. Um, one so thing thinking I fast, thinking quickly on your feet. Exactly. And I think one thing I learned not to do was to question anything. <laughs> um, they want what they want. And it's your job to deliver what they want in the audition room. Not the audition room. The recording studio and in the audition room not to question it's sort of a, it's sort of a, an audition room though if you're going in there and you're doing so they know what they want and you and you were going to say you have to and you have to again adapt so mm -hmm. you shouldn't even though they're going to ask you something and you have to do it their way you can put your own spin on it but you have to do what they're asking because that's what they want so i think those are the two things i very much learned during when i was doing hattie what about some technical things? Like give the audience who may, if some of these people have never done voiceovers before. Yeah. So what, you know, consonants, what vowels, what words do you have to be careful of and explain a little bit of the technical aspect to us? So the technical aspect, you have to have a very clear diction. I think when I was little, since I had such a little nasally voice, I'd have to say words very slowly so you could hear what they were, what I was saying because, um, my vowels would sometimes, or my N's would sound like M's. Right. So I have to be very careful when it comes to stuff like that. And I actually took that and I put that into my real life. I try and be as clear as possible when I'm speaking so people understand what I'm saying. So those vowels and those consonants, you have to speak slowly. So even if it's a kid's show like Wally Kazam, it was a learning show for kindergartners and first graders. You need them to understand what you're saying. So I think that's very technical and it's very hard because when you're talking, you just want to talk like this and you want to talk very fast, right, right. but slow yourself down and consciously slow yourself down. Right. I mean, kids speak fast. That's, a, you yeah. know, I mean, most kids speak quickly. So that's a good note for the kids out there who are watching. Um, what about like some technical things like the P sounds or certain sounds and mm -hmm. how it affects the mic and the overall yes. sound quality? I, I would get yelled at so often because I talk with my hands. I very, when I'm talking into the microphone, I'm talking like I would in musical theater. I'm acting it out. I'm not just saying the words because I feel like if you're acting it out more, it gives you more of a realistic approach than just saying the words into the microphone. Mm -hmm. So they would yell at me all the time because I'd be moving around uh -huh. in front Mike, and they'd be like, Kyla, you have to stop moving. And I'm like, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I just want to talk. And they're like, okay, just be careful if you're going to step back from the mic a little bit. So you might hit the mic. Is that what would happen? Maybe you'd brush up against the mic or something? Like this, or if I had headphones on, I, I was going like this, the wire would tug. Oh, okay. That, so I have to be very careful with stuff like that. Or B, you're right, Bs and Ps, if you go into the microphone, you're gonna get like a shh sound. So you have to do very soft um, onset. If nobody knows what that means, you have to do very soft going on to the word. So instead of puppy, it's puppy, which is like very, it's, it sounds the exact same, but it's very different. Yes, yes, very you have to hold it back a little bit, hold back a little bit with those yes. P and B sounds. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So so Kyla, that, that's a good point that you use your hands, so do I. Now, sometimes you'll see like, you know, HBO, the making of, you know, Jack Black and Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. And you see him in the booth and he's like acting the whole thing out. And he's going yeah. nuts, you know. Now, as an actor, as a former actor myself, that's what I would want to do. Do you, are you, do you do that? Do you act out the scene or are you too concerned? And how do you do that then? How do you inhabit the character if you can't move? 
Exactly. That's kind of, that's a struggle I'm still dealing with is trying to figure out a way that I could still get the point across without being too in this. <laughs> okay. Kind of fun. And I try and keep it contained. So if, let me stand up so you can see if I'm talking, I try and keep it to here instead of here. Okay. So if I'm talking, I'm talking like this and I'm talking very kind of um, contained. So it's almost in a little box where you're not flailing all around. Um, right. Like that still helps me get the point across. You don't need to use your hands. You really use your voice and still have intention behind it. But it helps me if I use my hands because then I know that I'm getting my point across, even if they can't see my hands. So I'm acting it out and it should be getting across to the right. Audience. I, I, I feel you. And what about smiling through it? Let's say, hold on a sec. Um, let's say, to, if, if your character, let's say, is smiling, right? Yeah. You can tell if a character, you know, you can tell if, guys, for example, when you pick up the phone, if somebody's smiling or they're frowning, you can pretty much hear that in their voice. So do you yeah. bring a natural smile when you're supposed to smile? And do you do all that stuff with your face? Do you light up? Yes, I, my mother can um, vouch for me. I come out of um, recording sessions and I'm exhausted. I am so tired. I just want to go to bed. And she's actually been able to sit on, in on some of them. They actually let her sit on a couple of the sessions that I do. And she could see that I'm smiling. I'm excited. And when I'm sad, I'm more reserved. And she could tell by my vocal tone and by my facial expression if she knows if I'm smiling, I'm smiling, I'm talking like this. But if I'm not smiling, I'm talking like this. So it's a very distinct difference that I guess you need to have. And it'll tell you that in the description and everything that you need to do. Or you could add your own twist into it. Like if you're laughing, they could tell if you're just laughing or if you're actually laughing. Tell me another thing. So sometimes when you're in the booth, actors will be given a direction. Like give that line to me three different ways. Give me an yeah. ABC take or a one, two, three, or what do they call it when you do it? Did I they, get that right? <laughs> usually what they say is, okay, Kyla, I want you to do that line again three different ways and go. <laughs> usually and so, fast, right. I don't really have time to prepare myself. <laughs> right, right. So you change, what do you play with then as an actor? If someone yeah. tells you to do it three different ways, what are you playing with? What are you playing with? Usually I play with either intention behind it because everything can always have a different intention so kind of facial expressions i'll try and make one more relaxed maybe one more excited it kind of depends on the line if it's what's the weather today i could do it what's the weather today or oh what's the weather today or what's the weather today kind of more like a question so if there's lots of different ways you could do it I think more now, when I was little, I had to think about it more. But now, if they say that, I'm just like, okay, go. <laughs> so it's like my brain kind of just comes up with things as I'm talking, which is kind of nice now because I don't really stress about it that much. <laughs> right, right. Good. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So you also voiced um, on the Trolls, The Beat Goes On. Which yeah. character did you play? I played CJ Suki, which is the niece of DJ Suki, who was in... Trolls, the um, Trolls the movie, and so many other million different things that her, my aunt, my aunt in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's. And now, with voiceover acting, though, you don't really, do you ever get to meet your fellow co stars? Or, like, how does that work since you're alone in the booth, right? I, this is going to come very big surprise. I, doing CJ, I have only met one person doing it. And that was Frida Wolf, who played DJ. I just happened to run into her at some point. Her session was right before mine, and I've only met her once. Wow. So same thing with Wally Kazam. I only met the kid who plays Wally. And I didn't really meet anybody else. It was kind of interesting how that worked, because you think it's like um, in the movies or Broadway, where you're acting face to face. And I think that's the really hard part about it is because you're not acting face to face. You're kind of having a conversation with yourself. Right, right. You're talking to yourself in a booth and trying to imagine what that other person might be saying back to you. Mm -hmm. So do you just read when you're in the booth then? Do you skip the other person's lines or does somebody read them or do you just do your lines? It kind of depends if usually we skip the other person's lines. But if I need, if it's, I'm supposed to be scared and somebody's trying to encourage me, I guess. 
they'll read the line before it and then they'll have me jump on top of it. Or if I'm interrupting someone, they'll read the line and I'll jump on top of it. So it kind of depends. A lot of the stuff depends on the situation that you're in, which is also kind of confusing because that's one another thing I learned with Hattie is everything's going to be different. Nothing's ever going to be the same. It's kind of a new experience every time you walk into the recording booth. It's not going to be the same experience you had, and it'll never be the same experience you had. You're always going into something new. And I think that's definitely going in with the lines and intention and all of that stuff. Interesting. It's so cool. I love voiceovers. I think it's so much fun. And it so, is. What, so can you do uh, maybe, I don't know if you remember, I'm putting you totally on the spot right now, but can you remember like maybe a line or two that you have done, maybe a character that you voice that has a different voice from, from you, from Kyla, and then can you do one that's in your own voice for us? Ooh, okay. Well, do you remember any lines? This is a totally random question. It just came to me and I was like, let's see what it's like. <laughs> a tough one but I definitely know CJ has a more raspier voice than I do I made her that on purpose because she's a lot cooler than I am in her real life so one of her lines would be you're the best aunt ever aunt DJ which is like so not what I sound like right um, and I actually right before coronavirus I had booked a DreamWorks pilot, and I'm not allowed to enclose anything on that right now, which kind of sucks, but her is very similar to mine, and I would do that for you, but I'm not allowed. You're not allowed, but it sounds just like you do, so we got the picture, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I love that raspy voice that you created, and how did you come up with that? Did they just say, give me something raspy, or? No, actually, I, when I booked this job, I was about maybe 11, and I actually recorded this really late at night. It was maybe 10 o'clock at night. I had danced and I had a bunch of things going on. And I was reading her lines and I had to sing um, a pop song. And the pop song I was singing was kind of like grungy almost. So I was like, it would be so cool if she had like a little bit of a rasp to her voice. And my mom was like, I don't know, do whatever you want, sure. So I put a little, the tiniest little bit of rasp. And when I booked it, I was like, whoa, wait, I did a totally different voice from my own. That's kind of cool. And that's how CJ was kind of born. But at the end of the sessions, my voice would be so tired. Right. From putting on that raspy voice, which was just so insane. So it was like, it was- so how, do you, how do you take care of your voice, Kyla? If you are putting on, uh, you know, yeah. how do you make sure that you don't hurt yourself? Because it is pretty easy to do, right? If you're not using your voice correctly. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm classically trained. I have an amazing voice coach and she makes sure that nothing is conflicting, nothing's hurting my voice. And if I ever feel something that's wrong, she always tells me, what are you feeling? How can we fix this? So she has always helped me keep my voice healthy. I've gone to multiple ENTs and my voice, my vocal cords are perfectly fine. They say they're awesome, they're clean. So I'm always making sure that I'm not doing anything to hurt my voice, especially if I'm like going to an amusement park or something. I like have to hold my scream because I'm like, don't scream, you can't scream, it's gonna ruin your voice. So when you're going down the roller coaster, you, you're just like, I, I have to scream if I'm yeah. going on a roller coaster. There's no way. <laughs> it's, now it's a uh, conscious thing that just my mind just knows don't ruin your voice. And if something feels wrong, that definitely means it's wrong. So don't do it. <laughs> so if I do feel something that's going on, like I just re recently, ooh, recently had laryngitis. Oh, so wow. My voice is actually still recovering from laryngitis. And it's going to take a little bit of time to get back to normal. But um, I just totally cut off singing. I was like, no talking, no singing, no screaming, nothing of the sort. So it's just really knowing how to take care of your voice. And now it's easy for me. When I was younger, my mom would have to remind me more. But now if she's like, oh, you need to do this, I'm like, I can't. My voice is shot. I'm not going to push it. And she's like, yep, you're right. Amazing. Interesting. So you have to be very mature for a kid your age. You can't scream. You have to try to, you know, always think about your job, your work. You have a career. Yeah. And it you know, and I'm, I know you love it. So and you want that to keep going. So that's a, a good thing for anyone who's a young actor out there. You know, you do have to sacrifice quite a bit for this yeah. career, right? Yeah. Um, not that like screaming is a huge sacrifice. But you know, you, you, yeah. you sometimes want to get rowdy as a teenager. What grade are you in now? I'm a freshman in high school. So I'm in ninth grade. Or do you go to school? Or are you homeschooled? I am fully virtual this year just because there are a bunch of reasons why. One, because I'd rather stay at home 
then expose myself. And it's just kind of scary, especially another reason, because if I do get coronavirus, that messes with your lungs. Right. And breath support's a huge thing in acting. So I just really need to be careful with that, which is right. a sacrifice, which comes with it. And so I'm fully virtual. I does, have your, does your brother go to school or is he virtual as well? My brother, actually, my dad's a principal of a oh. school. So my brother goes to his school and my dad has a private school. They do a million things to ensure the safety. They have like a spray machine. They have everything that could possibly be there where the public schools don't really have access to that because my dad's school only goes from K to eighth grade. So I'd rather stay at home. It's actually easier for me too. I'm less stressed out because of all the work that I have to do with school and with what I'm doing now, my dance classes. So it's just easier for me to be at home. Right, totally. And how do you, how are you, I mean, so you, you don't have the, the same sort of ninth grade high school experience that you would mm. have had yeah. this virus not come along. But I mean, a lot of kids that are professional actors don't go to regular yeah. school. So you probably have a lot of friends who also aren't attending regular school, right? Yes, a lot of my friends are actually in New York City. Of course, I have friends from my hometown who are awesome. But I also have friends in New York City, which I actually can't see right now, which is so devastating because I miss them so much. But um, we FaceTime, I try and talk to them a lot. And it's kind of nice because this is just opening a gateway for other things for other people. Of course, like with coronavirus, it's really hard, but I'm getting to spend more time with my family and hanging out with them, which is also really nice because I needed to do that because ever since I came back on tour, our lives have been kind of like all messy. Same with when I came off from White Christmas. This only happened three months after White Christmas ended. Oh, so really? I really spend time with my family and like come back together and really like bond again, which we hadn't been able to do for years and years and years because of me <laughs> because of yeah me. because because you're on tour yeah because you have a job and you're and wow your parents are really cool I have to say oh, are, and so is my brother my brother is my biggest supporter and so oh. my parents are amazing my brother he I don't know what I would do without him if he didn't support me at all because it would be an absolute mess same with my parents because he's so supportive and he wants and my family is really awesome. It's really great that I have people who love me and support me in what I do and are going going to the end to make sure that I achieve my dreams. Which yeah, I, I, let me tell you, you know, my parents, I, I lived on Long Island. I lived 20 minutes from the city, the very first town on the island. They, back when I was growing up, we also didn't have places like a class act New York, but yeah. they were like, I'm not driving you into the city, 13 miles into the city. Are you crazy? You'll go to your yeah. local voice teacher. I'm like, but I want to be, you know, so it's really, really cool that your parents are willing to sacrifice so much for you and, and for, you know, for your happiness. It's what you love to do. Okay. So let me ask you one question for those uh, young actors out there. Do you get nervous at auditions and what do you do to help with nerves? Kind of? Ooh, this is actually a great question because when I was little, actually around the same time I was in Class Act New York, I had massive stage fright. I was afraid of everything. I still don't want to sing sometimes in front of people and I still get nervous it's like it's not going to go away for me and I already know that because I it's just a buildup of excitement that's what I like to think of it as now is more of a buildup of excitement I'm not nervous I'm just overly excited which is making me nervous <laughs> right. so I think if I just take a deep breath and tell myself I'm gonna be fine and believe myself not like totally doubt myself the next second I'll be fine. But if I just pressure myself, I'm like, you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. That's telling yourself you're not going to. So you're not going to, which, and my mom and my dad help me. My dad, whenever I'm going to auditions and I'm a little bit nervous, we watch like food videos or we do like Buzzfeed quizzes to just like get my mind off of it. So I'm somewhere else and then I can go right back in and I'm fine. Cool. But with my mom, it's, it's kind of, my parents really helped me a lot with that because they know how nervous I am to do things like that, which is mm -hmm. so funny, which is so funny for somebody who's a performer and has like massive anxiety about all that stuff, which is so weird. But, um, but, now, you used, but it sounds like you're taking those nerves and that, and what you, I love that you call it excitement and not nervousness mm -hmm. because if, if you weren't nervous at all, then you probably wouldn't be human, right? Like, 
if we all should feel a little bit nervous before we go on stage or before we do something really big. And if we don't, yeah. then, you know, then like, whoa. Yeah. Well, we should feel something, you know? I like to think that if I'm not nervous, there's something wrong. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. The, like, if I'm not nervous, I'm like, am I not excited for this? Like, I should, I should be nervous. I should have that excitement build up. I should be a little bit anxious. I should be a little bit shaky. So when I'm not, I'm like, oh, there is something wrong here. I should be at Maybe least. I don't like this project that much. Or yeah. Something, right. I feel like being excited and nervous is you, you care about it. Mm -hmm. And that's my mom told me that at one point. And I think that really changed it for me because she was like, Kyla, you're not nervous. You're just excited and it's fine to be excited. And I was like, right. you're right. You're, I am just excited. It's I'm all about the way you think of things, right? You could let that anxiety overtake you or you could take control of it by saying, this is normal. This is excitement. I'm excited about this, which is why I care. I love that. I love that. Thank yeah. you, mom. <laughs> um, so do you have any advice to young actors who are looking to start out or even just some older actors who want to maybe, you know, go for this sort of thing? What, what, what's some advice that you have? I feel like the best advice I was ever given was to just keep going with it because there are so many times where you'll be like knocked down and you, I, you don't want to get up. And I've been there a lot of times. <laughs> and you just really need to stand back up, give yourself a breather and just keep going for it because in the end, that's all that's going to matter. What if you didn't go for it? What if you just stopped right there and then the next job was like what you were waiting for? So I feel like you're always on a path and there's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be, you're going to go in totally different directions. You're going to turn around. You're going to go in circles a million times. But in the end, there, that path is going to lead you somewhere. If it's something that's great, that's awesome. Or if it's something that's not so great, you're going to push through it no matter what in the end. And I think that's what really keeps me going and keeps me driven is that I know the right things are going to come for me at the right time. And even though sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I booked that job. Oh, I wish I was here. Oh, I wish I was there. In the end, I have to remind myself, you know, it's fine. You're on your own path. You are not anybody else. You are you. You have to keep going. You're driving your own car, not anybody else's. I love that analogy. Wow, good. You're, you're great. You're so mature. I can't believe you're 14 years old. This is not <laughs> possible. What is something you wish you had learned about the industry sooner? Perhaps like that nobody really told you to expect. Hmm. I think the one thing I didn't expect would be all the friends that you make. Okay. Because when you're going to auditions, usually it's the same people you're seeing because they're very much like you. I have made wonderful lifetime friends in this business that I didn't even know that I would make. So and I like to differentiate it. I like to think of my school friends and my school friends and my acting friends and my acting friends. And I realize now that my acting friends are literally identical copies of me. <laughs> like sometimes they're right. literally identical copies of me. And one of my greatest friends, we are so similar. It's not even funny. Like we look like sisters. We were actually on Sound of Music together. So Olivia? Her past as Is it Olivia? Am I no. making that up? Audrey Bennett. We are so Audrey. guess what? I are really good friends. And Audrey met her agent at our showcase too. Yes. So like we're she, we, stuff. she is a younger version of me and yeah. we're really good friends. And then I have other friends who are the total opposite of me. So right. I feel like with the acting friends, it's there's no kind of mid ground. They're either like you or they're not like you or my school friends. It's kind of a mix of everybody that you get to see, which is really great. So definitely, I feel like all the friends that I've made was something I didn't expect to make. It was amazing, a lot of amazing people and amazing friends, including adults and directors and casting directors and meeting so many great people. Interesting. I love that. And I love that you're such good friends with Audrey. If only I'd known, I would have had you. If, is it possible to have more than one person on a live at the same time? I don't know. Um, okay, so what has been your most favorite uh what, what is the best thing that's happened to you thus far in your career would you say oh that's a hard question these are good <laughs> questions you have here the <laughs> best thing that has happened to me so far in my career that's i don't know i think the it's best all good 
I guess the, the best thing that has happened to me is maybe booking my first job. I think that was the best thing for me because without that, I would not be where I am now. I think booking that very first job, which was what would you do? It was my first audition I ever went on. Without that, I wouldn't have been able to be where I am now. So I think that is the best thing that has happened to me was that one audition or even being in your class act well, that has definitely one of been one of the best things because without that i wouldn't be where i am here either <laughs> well we're glad that we could you know we could play a small part in your journey that's really awesome to hear so um you can't talk about the exciting projects that you have in the works not sadly but i'm very excited to share but it's dream it's dream work so you know steven spielberg you know just some small <laughs> small people run that company um what is your dream role kyla dream role Ooh, i have multiple but one of my dream roles would probably be glinda in wicked because I see that she's very much like me i love kristen chen with so much and I feel like I'm very relatable to her. Something that would be totally opposite from me, which is definitely a dream role, would be Eurydice in Hades Town. I love the folk sound she has to her singing. And that's actually one of the things that I love to sing. I love to sing folk music. And that's kind of one of the industries I'm starting to break into now is the music industry and finding my own voice in that. So that would definitely be something that's totally opposite for me would be definitely Eurydice from Hades Town. Awesome. Eva, Eva, Noblezada. She's teaching a class for us on November 7th. She teaches privates for us too. She's awesome. Um, so which actor or actress inspires you the most, would you say? Or one, or somebody that you really look up to? Ooh, well, definitely Shirley Temple, which I said earlier, because, oh my gosh, I without her too, I wouldn't be where I am now. I wouldn't even imagine any of this. So her strength, as just a human being, going from um, child prodigy to all the amazing things that she's done and how she kind of transitioned through her life is incredible. Also, Judy Garland, who um, I actually got to work with her daughter, which was awesome. Oh my gosh, she's so sweet. Liza Minnelli. Are we talking about Liza? Her other sister. Other, other, okay. What's, so the, I, what's her sister's name again? Lorna. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Amazing. Lorna. That is so cool. Amazing. And she played um, Martha on White Christmas. So, oh my gosh, amazing, 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 amazing. Oh, wonderful. Um, Judy Anyone Garland. else that the young people might know? The young people might know. Ooh. Yes. Because you're like an old soul over here. I am an old soul. People. I love it. Um, I'd have to say... Maybe Taylor Louderman, because she, one, she's wonderful. She has an amazing voice and she's so sweet. And two is she's very adaptable. She can go from being the rudest person ever to being like the nicest person ever range wise in roles. So I think that's something to be very inspired by and inspired to be one day is to have that range of emotion that she can capture which is yeah. amazing very few people are able to do that to really shed yeah. their skin and step into somebody else's you know <laughs> shoes so kyla one more thing let's see if we have any questions from the folks we i want to mention that you do have a podcast can you I tell do. us about the podcast there kyla for me Yes, I have a segment on the Mark White Show called Kyla's Corner, where I uh, spread inspiring messages every single week on Saturdays. So you can follow me at Kyla's Corner Co Podcast on Instagram, or you can follow me at Kyla Carter to see updates about the podcast, which is really great and it's super awesome. And I hope you listen to it and that would make me really happy and hopefully I inspired some of you guys. <laughs> I will be listening. Let's take a couple of questions. So. Yeah. Um, if I can read it, because my eyesight is going here, Kyla. Please tell Kyla that she's the best, and she's beautiful and kind oh. to her fans, because I got to go, please make sure you tell her. So, please. <laughs> I got another oh, one. So sweet. That's so nice. And do you like Starbucks, somebody's asking? I do. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Do you like acting? I think we know the answer to that one, Kyla. <laughs> 
So Kyla, I want to thank you once again for joining me today for this awesome little chat. You are such a mature young lady. I am really impressed with the person you've become and you're amazing. Um, so I, I'm going to be listening to your podcast for sure. And I'm going to be following your journey and let me know if and when you book another job and you can announce it. I'll be the first one to do so. Um, and then we have right here, one more may have just come in. Do you, uh, what was your first musical that you ever saw? Somebody it asked. was wicked, actually. That um, was another inspiring piece for me to become an actor. Was see, and I it was actually my first paycheck that I got for my first booking. And I asked my mom, asked me, "What do you want to do with it, Kyla?" And I said, "I want to go see Wicked." So that was my first Broadway show. Smart girl. What is your favorite Broadway show? Oh, oh gosh, this is a hard one. Too many, too many, too many. Um, probably, I'm going to have to say either Wicked or Hades Town. I knew you were going to say that. Oh, like, it's so good. That's so different and so similar at the same time. <laughs> yes, yes, Kyla. Awesome. So thank you so much for talking about voiceovers and about theater and your career. And you are an inspiration. And um, I'm so glad that you met your agent at our showcase and your best friend, Audrey Bennett, did too, which is awesome. I love to hear that. Um, and say hello to your parents. And I hope we can do this again someday. Yes, thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Great talking to you and great seeing you after so long. Oh, my goodness. It's been a while. It's been, it's been, a, been, a, it's been a bit. <laughs> All right, sweetie. Have a wonderful evening. Yes, you too. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. And guys, I'm just going to tell you about some cool things that are coming up. As you know, Kyla is a huge fan of Hades Town, And as I said before, we've got uh, Eva Noblezada, two-time Tony nominee, Hades Town star coming on November 7th, which is a Saturday to teach a song and monologue class. You can perform a monologue for her, a song cut, or um, both actually. And um, also on Monday, October 19th, next Monday, we have a masterclass with the major Broadway, Broadway and TV star Andy Miantis. You know Andy from Les Mis, Spring Awakening, and TV Smash. He was also uh, on the CW show, The Flash. He's awesome. So come perform for him. If you're looking for an agent or a manager or both, just like Kyla did, you can meet your agent and manager at our next showcase, which is next Thursday, not this Thursday, but Thursday, October 22nd in the evening, we've got 20 scouting agents and managers coming to look for new clients. And believe it or not, we've had a bunch of um, people get representation over this pandemic because voiceovers is still doing strong TV, film, you name it. So that's going to be awesome. Come join us. On Saturday, October 24th, we have major LA Disney and Nick TV director, Wendy Barone. Wendy directs amazing shows like she did Live and Maddie. She does Raven's Home. She's directing that right now. Funked, Coop and Cammy Ask the World, Sydney to the Max. Our student is Sydney. She did Walk the Prank. Our student was on Walk the Prank. Um, and she's wonderful that we're going to have two sessions for kids, teens, and adults split by age on Saturday, October 24th. Learn how to book a Disney or Nick sitcom. Also, we have Beetlejuice star Alex Brightman, two time Tony nominee. You know him from School of Rock as well. He's going to be here on November 16th. Perform for Alex, get his amazing feedback and coaching and participate in an awesome Q&A. We love him. He also teaches privates for us now, as does Eva and many other Broadway stars do as well. Our four and six week classes are enrolling now on our site and they start the first week of November. So we've got a dance call experience class. For those of you like me that aren't great act, you know, dancers, I was a better actor and singer, but I wasn't such a good dancer. This is the class for you. If you feel nervous before a dance audition, if you feel like you ace the rest of the audition, but this part of the audition was a little shaky, then this class is for you. You have a private lesson with your teacher each week. Each week, we're going to send you a video focusing on a different um, genre of dance from, you know, hip hop to contemporary jazz to bossy to golden age, you know, all this good stuff. So come join us for that. It starts um, Friday, October 30th, actually, and it runs through December. Wednesdays, November 4th through December 16th, we have a six-week dramatic TV acting class with major on-camera actors R.J. Brown and James Lee O'Brien. It ends in a showcase for four agents and managers. We have a six-week voiceover class, which starts first, first week of November, and we'll have 
a voiceover casting director as well as two voiceover agents there. We also have a four week acting lab with an LA talent manager who manages like big stars as well as an LA award winning casting director and producer. And that starts Thursday, November 5. There will be industry uh, folks at that final showcase as well. We're doing a charity cabaret to benefit the Actors Fund on Saturday, November 21st, Sing for a Great Cause. Look at the private lessons with major Broadway stars and LA casting directors and managers. We've got it all. Thanks guys for joining. Hope to see you soon. Stay well, stay healthy, and keep your spirits up. Bye.